Hello and welcome to Art Song Notes. My name is Kara Alfano. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the lovely and mysterious Die Lotusblume with music by Robert Schumann and poetry by Heinrich Heine. So as always, in this Art Song Notes video, um, I'm going to divide it up into four sections. We'll start off with history notes where I'll take you through a brief history of the song. We'll then proceed to lyric notes where I'll take you through the pronunciation of the German text and read you an English translation. And then we'll talk a little bit about what the text means. Then we'll move on over to composition notes where I'll talk a little bit about the compositional structure of the piece and then we'll end the video with technique notes where I'll give you some vocal technique tips to help you in your study of Die Lotusblume. So let's get started with some history notes. Die Lotusblume was composed by Robert Schumann in 1840. Now 1840 is known as Schumann's Liederjahr or Year of the Song and it was during this year that he composed at least 138 songs. Now when you think about it, it means he averaged writing two and a half songs per day for an entire year which I think is just incredible. Now, 26 of those 138 songs he put together in a collection of songs um, that is marked as Opus 25 or also known as the collection Myrten. Now, the German word Myrten means myrtle in English, and myrtle is a flowering plant that is associated with, among other things, weddings and marriage. So Schumann composed these 26 songs of Opus 25 put them together and presented this collection to his bride, Clara Wieck, as a wedding gift. Now, Die Lotusblume is one of these 26 songs, and we're gonna see why in just a moment, Die Lotusblume was included in this collection of songs for his bride. So now I'll start off lyric notes with reading the German text of Die Lotusblume. Die Lotusblume engstigt sich vor der Sonne pracht und mit gesenktem Haupte erwartet sie träumend die Nacht. Der Mond, der ist ihr Bulle, erweckt sie mit seinem Licht und ihm entschleiert sie freundlich ihr frommes Blumengesicht. Sie blüht und glüht und leuchtet und starrt stumm in die Höhe. Sie duftet und weinet und zittert vor Liebe und Liebesweh. And now the English translation as provided by George Bird and Richard Stokes in the Fischer Diskau Book of Leader is as follows. The lotus flower fears the splendor of the sun and with bowed head dreaming awaits the night. The moon is her lover and wakes her with his light and to him she gladly unveils her innocent flower-like face. She blooms and glows and gleams gazing dumbly towards the sky. She is fragrant and weeps and trembles with love and the pain of love. Now, the lotus flower in Die Lotusblume is rather rare and unique. You see, most lotus flowers actually open up during the daylight hours and close back up during the nighttime. But there are a few rare forms of lotus flowers, one being uh, featured here in Die Lotusblume, that remains closed off to the sunlight, but opens up during the nighttime. So this unique flo lotus flower in Die Lotusblume could very likely represent a bride, a bride who has remained closed off to other potential suitors, possibly represented by the sun in Die Lotusblume, but she awaits her one true love, her beloved. And when she is going to marry her beloved, she opens herself up to him. In this case, we're talking about the relationship between the moon 
and the lotus flower in De Lotus Bluma. Now there's also some thought that the, the lotus flower and the sun and the moon represent Clara Wieck, Clara's father, and Robert Schumann himself. So Clara was engaged to Robert Schumann, but her father did not want them to get married. So Clara may have felt she was fearful of her father, again represented by the son, and remained closed off to him. But she opened herself up to Robert Schumann, and of course we know that they ended up getting married. Thus, the song Die Lotusblume is such a perfect fit in the collection of Myrton, as Robert Schumann gave Myrton to his bride, Clara Wieck, on their wedding. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the compositional structure of Die Lotusblume. The time signature is in 6-4, which is unique. Maybe it's unique like the lotus flower that blooms during the night. And the tempo is marked ziemlich langsam, meaning moderately slow. Maybe this tempo represents the pace at which the flower reveals itself to the moon. Now the piano plays a consistent quarter note chordal accompaniment that doesn't cease until the last handful of beats at the end of the song. One could imagine these chords possibly representing a myriad of ideas that could include the constant passage of time or maybe the sacred nature of the lotus flower in bloom in response to its lover, the moon. Now, as the song progresses, the vocal line, which moves primarily in a stepwise fashion throughout the entire song, well, it overall continually moves higher and higher in the vocal range, thus creating a sort of musical representation of the flower opening upward toward the moon. Now, lastly, I think it's notable that the phrase for Liebe und Liebesfee is repeated twice at the end of the song. So remember, this translates to the English phrase with love and the pain of love. So I really appreciate the acknowledgement of the multifaceted nature of romantic and matrimonial love, that it's both wonderful, but yet there will be some times that will be filled with pain. So I think it's really great that Heine and Schumann are keeping it real. So now let's go on to technique notes where I'll give you some vocal technique tips to help you in your singing of Die Lotusblume. Technique note number one. Sing all the way through every vowel on every pitch. So because of the slow pace of the song, one must pay very close attention to not close down to the consonants prematurely, but rather sing all the way through each pitch on the vowel. Let me sing a demonstration of what I mean by this by singing the very first phrase of the song. So there you could hear, I was very mindful of letting the consonants be very quick and very crisp, but really using the whole space of each one of those notes to sing through it on the vowel. Technique note number two. In measures two and six, be careful of tuning the G sharp. That's of course assuming you're singing this um, in its original key of F major. Just make sure you sing that G sharp and you don't sing a G natural. Technique note number three. So for newer singers, it can be a challenge to sing all the way through each phrase with sufficient breath support. So I suggest practicing the song on lip trills or a buzzy Z or a buzzy V. So let me demonstrate what I mean by each one of those. If I was gonna do a lip trill on the first phrase, You can hear how I'm using the lip chill to learn how to move my breath consistently from pitch to pitch to pitch. Or you could try it on a buzzy Z. Or a 
buzzy V. So pick at least one of those and try practicing this song using one of those sounds. Technique note number four. When you get to the phrases that can that include the um, words sie freundlich, ihr frommes, and weinet und zittert, well, those are all set on the highest pitches of the song. So you are going to need to modify the vowels on those words. Let me demonstrate what I mean by that. As I'm looking at the phrase und ihm entschleiert sie freundlich, ihr frommes Blumengesicht. We have to make sure that we use taller vowels as we are singing up into those higher pitches. So like this. So make sure that you feel comfortable to modify those vowels nice and tall. Don't sing those high pitches with a closed off mouth. And lastly, technique note number five. Obey the tempo markings found in measures 18 through 22 and measures 24 through 27. So in measures 18 through 22, we see the tempo marking nacht und noch schneller, which means gradually faster. But then in measures 24 through 27, we see retardando, which means it's to get slower. So I believe these tempo markings beautifully demonstrate the excitement and the joy of the blossoming flower. But then followed by the realization of both the love and the pain that can come from the sacred union of the lotus flower and the moon. Thank you so much for joining me here at Art Song Notes today. I hope you found this video about De Lotus Bluma helpful in your study of this wonderful leader. Check out some of the other videos here on this channel, and of course, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Until next time, happy singing!